Hey guys, alright, so uh, per my previous uh, video I said if you guys had any questions feel free to ask and I'll try to answer them. And uh, taking me up on that, Robert asks, what are your plans for avionics, IFR, ADSB, what power plant are you going to get, etc. Uh, let me handle these one at a time. Uh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, and uh, like Omega 540. I don't know. Okay, that's probably not helpful. I'm just kidding. I do know. So with regards to avionics, I think um, it's just too early to tell. The problem I'm having is it's going to be two years or more before, realistically, avionics are even going to be a concern. And in two years, everything will change. Um, it, you know, even if, even if the industry stays almost status quo, avionics two years from now will be different from those today. So I don't know that <clears throat> rushing out and buying some avionics suite is a good idea. Moreover, I think that my appetite for avionics has changed. Uh, the more that I fly in an old 1960s era plane, and I, which just has the standard six-pack, the more I realize that those work just fine. When I had originally started this process, I had said all the latest bells and whistles, all the best of the best, you know, glass and all that, and I just don't know that that's realistic. It, it doesn't even, it just doesn't matter. Uh, I think, I don't know, I think for future proofing, I'm still going to go with primary glass, maybe a secondary smaller glass, and then have uh, backup, old school backup style steam gauges as well. Uh, I also would like to incorporate, you know, an iPad into the panel if possible, probably over on the passenger side just for my wife. But that's my best guess on avionics. Uh, I used to think it was going to be always the latest bells and whistles. Now I'm less concerned with that. Which specific avionics is still uh, a question to be determined in the future. Uh, you know, I've, I've flown in planes that had Garmin. I've seen the Dynon stuff. And uh, I've flown in planes with MGL. And they're all really nice. They all have their own special things they do and don't do, etc. Uh, which is the best? Well, you know, your mileage may vary. I'm probably leaning towards MGL at this point, simply because they're less expensive for a very good product, and a, a lot of the folks around this airport uh, very much favor MGL. So that's, that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. So that's avionics. Uh... Engine-wise, this plane has a Lycoming 540 in it. I don't know if I'm going to get the O540, the IO540, uh, or what. Honestly, that's going to be largely determined by budget. Uh, you know, a brand new Lycoming IO540 is ridiculously expensive. Uh, I know, I know that uh, Lynn got an O540 off of a plane that was uh, seized. It was actually like a uh, a plane that was transporting drugs or something like that, and it was seized by the government, and he went to an auction, and he got it for a steal, uh, and, and it works great. And so I might be on the lookout for something like that. going to be very difficult, though. I mean, I would rather go new, of course, but you're talking $35,000, $40,000 for the top-end, like, Lycoming IO540, and that's, that's a bunch of money. <laughs> You know, that's the one piece that's going to be tricky to get. Like, the rest of this I can buy for cash, uh, simply because I can save up over the course of months and months and then plonk down the ten grand to get the next kit, which is what I did with the wings, which are not here yet. But um, it's, it's going to be a... For me, it would be a matter of years to save up for a, we'll say, $40,000 engine... Uh, where I could just drop cash on it. That's, that's not something that I have the luxury of being able to do. Uh, you can just out of pocket. So that'll be, again, engine is going to be one that's down the road, thankfully, and I have time to ponder and time to save, uh, but I don't know which one it's going to be yet. Uh, I have looked at a few that I found online that were used engines that people were trying to get out from under, and I think it would be, again, it would be a mistake to buy early because that engine would end up sitting on the floor rusting 
for two years or three years or whatever before I would be able to hang it. So at this point, again, we're just not there yet. Uh, I don't remember what the rest of the questions were. Uh, what made me pick self-etching? Oh, uh, self-etching primer for the few places that I do actually use primer. Uh, the reason I went with that is simply uh, convenience of a rattle can, honestly. There's nothing more convenient than picking up a rattle can, rattling it, and just priming it on that way. I don't see a vast need for uh, priming. I I'm not flying in a big salt, you know, salty area or anything like that. Uh, I've flown in many, many planes that were not primed at all on the inside, and they still fly just fine. Uh, they're, you know, some of them have the barest patina of oxidization on them, but uh, I, uh, most of them you would never know. And I, I just don't see the need, honestly, for priming. Uh, it adds a lot of weight. You don't think it would, but it does. It adds a lot of weight, and it certainly adds a lot of effort. Uh, so I am not priming like all of the inside of the skins and all that. It, I just don't see the point. So any priming I do uh, on those people, that, uh, on those pieces that do need it, are just rattle can. I'm lazy. And uh, that, by the way, is my motorcycle. That is a BMW K1600 GTL, and it is my other baby. I didn't build it. I just like going fast and around curves on it. You know, I actually don't go that fast on that. I'm actually a really boring motorcycle rider, but that's a, that's a fun toy, too. All right, that's all I got. Uh, if you have other questions, feel free to ask, and uh, I'll get to them as I can. Thanks.